Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to discuss how to determine inheritance patterns. So essentially how to read a pedigree chart, like this one. If you're unfamiliar with pedigree charts or Mendelian genetics, you should watch some other videos before watching this one. All right, we are going to create a flow chart to solve pedigrees. So you'll simply take any given pedigree through a series of questions until you determine the inheritance pattern. All right, and I want to add a note here. This flow chart we're going to build has a high degree of accuracy, but it is not foolproof. The random nature of genetics makes it impossible to be 100%. All right, so let's get started. The first two questions you'll ask are, are only males affected, and are all sons of an affected father affected? If the answer is yes, then the pattern is Y-linked, meaning a genetic disorder affiliated with the Y chromosome. And since only males possess a Y chromosome, that means all males will receive their Y chromosome from their father, and a Y-link trait will never show up in males without having an affected father. If you reach this point, then you have your solution, Y-linked. Right? If the answer is no to the first questions, then we ask if there are any cases where affected children do not have at least one affected parent. If the answer is yes, then it's recessive, though we don't know what type. Being recessive, they must have two affected alleles in order to express the disorder. Therefore, an unaffected child can have, or an affected child can have unaffected parents because they can both be carriers. However, it is possible that their parents could still be affected. Okay, if the answer is no, then it is a dominant disorder, and thus an affected child must have an affected parent. You should note that dominant patterns usually see someone affected in every generation in each affected lineage. This means that once you see an affected parent, you will usually see it in every generation thereafter. It doesn't skip generations. All right, moving down the recessive line, we need to ask two more questions. Are all the sons of an affected mother infected? And are more males affected in general? If yes, then it is X-linked recessive, meaning it's attached to the X chromosome. Since, only males have, uh, since males have only one X chromosome, they are more likely to show uh, any disorder on that X chromosome, whereas females have two X's, uh, so one good one can mask a mutated one. Also, males always receive their X chromosome from their mother, so if she is affected, she will have two X chromosomes with the mutation, and all sons are guaranteed to end up with it. All right, if the answer is no here, then it is autosomal recessive by default. Essentially, males and females are affected evenly, and affected mothers have unaffected sons. Moving down the dominant line, we ask, are all daughters of an affected father affected? If yes, then it is X-linked dominant. Males only have one X chromosome, which goes to their daughter, so all their daughters will have the mu that mutation. If the answer is no, then it is autosomal dominant by default. Uh, if there is a case where an affected father has an unaffected daughter, or an affected daughter has an unaffected father, you know it can't be X-linked because the father only has one X and that will always go to the daughter. So this is the whole flow chart. Uh, eventually I'll make a website and have a downloadable PDF available. Uh, I'll link that in the comments whenever I get around to making it. In the meantime, subscribe to my channel so that you'll be around when I do create my website. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.